As I was mentioning, we are on 6.1.1 version, and we just moved to 6.1, which is a lot different than 6.0. There are some things that are interesting. I haven't go, gone di- gone deep or dove deep into it yet. I, I would like somebody else at some point in time to do a presentation, maybe do a presentation on it that would dive deeper into it. And that could be its own presentation about, you know, what is the pros and cons or what are the cool features of 6.1 versus 6.0? since there is a a major difference. But let me go to the settings here real quick. And this is pretty much what we talked about in the last, I was gonna say the last episode, right? But no, not the last episode. In the last session for part one, we were going over the general settings and then we talked about, well, we didn't really touch on the writing. I would leave that alone. If you're a blogging with WordPress, we touched on, you know, just how many posts you wanted to show you would want to set up your reading. Discussion wise, this is where things can get a little interesting because it just really depends on a lot of the commenting, commenting features that you would have, how you want to set that up. Let me be this as well too. Still getting some people come in. Sorry if you hear me. All right. And then the media settings, I really wouldn't touch unless you want to get a little more grant, not to say granular, but uh, fine tune some more of this, but I would just leave the media alone. Permalinks, it's really good now that it starts with post name. I would keep it there unless you have a custom structure that you do want to use. Otherwise, I would just leave your permalinks as post link. And for the category tag base, that is a little bit more advanced. I'm not going to touch on that right now. But most people are going to have post name as far as their permalink structure, which just means your URL, how your URLs are displaying for the most part. And then privacy, which really is cool about WordPress is that they do create a privacy set, a privacy page for you. You can create one yourself, but they do create one for you. You can set it up. And then that way you have a, like a terms and conditions and you have a privacy policy there. So I do like that WordPress gives that out the box for you. So that's, those are the main parts that we touched on in the last session. And then we touched on adding the theme. So. There are a few themes that I would recommend, right? They're really good. And I'm talking about themes outside of the, the native WordPress themes that come with it. So isn't it interesting that now we just hit to 2023? I haven't played with this theme yet, but I'm assuming it's a full site editing based as well since 2022 was. Uh, that could be another presentation and topic, working with full site editing. I don't work with it yet, particularly, if somebody else does, hey, you have the floor. We can set you up if you want to do a presentation on that because there are some people that do want to take advantage of it. I just don't feel right now for, for me, it's you know ready for prime time. But I would say it's how a lot of people felt when it came to Gutenberg, right? You know, it wasn't ready a couple of years ago. And now look where we're, here we are. So I thought that is interesting. But as far as themes are concerned, Astra is really, really good. Let's see, let's see, let me move this real quick, sorry. Astra's really, really good. I would say Ocean WP is really good. I always mess this up, Navy or Neve. That's my, you know, my bad if I, if I don't get that right. And Generate Press. Those are some really, really good themes. And if you are looking for, if you're like you're using a page builder like Elementor and you want a plain, I don't wanna say plain, like I feel bad for the Janes in the world when you say plain Jane. But you know, you want a, a theme without any type of styling features and capabilities and things like that is just really, really like plain. It's, it's a very light, a lightweight. That's a good way to say it. You can use Elementor, but just remember, I mean, hello Elementor, but remember you have to make up for that and actually do your theme building in the settings of the Elementor page builder itself. But it still is a good theme. That's why it's here at the top. They don't put themes at the top on accident. I promise you that. So these are the theme things right here, but I use cadence. It's a, and I don't just use it because of, it's a theme. I use cadence because of the ecosystem that it comes with. It's a very robust ecosystem that has a lot of different plugins done very well. And they're a really good company. So 
Their theme is very flexible. It's one of those kind of like general based themes where example, oh, let me go to customize, where you can use it for a lot of different business purposes. That's the best way to say it. There are some themes that are specifically created for certain, you know, industries, right? Like a, a barbershop theme or, a, you know, a ML, a MLM theme, that's how you say it, right? E-commerce based theme, you know, there's certain ones that you can get on theme for us, like the template monster, you get the landing page factory, certain themes you can get specifically for industries, but there are themes that are like general based themes, like a Astra, you know, like a, a cadence or generate press where you can use it for any kind of business. It's just really about the functionalities that it comes with that you prefer, you know, what you like. So that's something that I think a lot of people don't really talk about or touch on most of the time when we're talking about themes, because I feel like a lot of people get confused. Um, you know, do I have to have a specific theme type that goes just for my industry versus can I use a, a theme, a really good theme that could be used across the industries and still get it to fit my needs? Can I still customize it to fit my industry? I think that that's something that I just wanted you all to kind of keep in top of mind. So, you know, you'd be able to change your colors and your fonts with, with most themes, right? And your, your typography. Some people say font, some people say type typography. I know there's a distinction between the two, but for lack of a better term or my ignorance, I'll just say fonts for now. So your fonts, you can change all this. And the cool thing about certain themes, I know Astra has it now, and I did touch on this before, but there are some people in here that are new that didn't go to part one. So I just wanna to touch on this again. Now you wanna work with a theme that gives you the capability of what is called like a global palette. And what this means, and this is this is some strategy here, you all. I'm, I'm telling you, it's not just you know nerdness or or development talk, but this is strategy behind this. When you work with certain themes that have that global palette, you're able to easily create your new pages, create more pages on your website, and inherit the colors. Meaning it will bring in the colors from your global palette. Uh, that way, you don't have to put all your colors in all the time. You don't have to manually add them in for certain sections, for certain buttons, for certain fonts, for certain layouts, it will just automatically add your brand colors on top of that new page you just made. That saves a lot of time. And I believe a lot of us in here are trying to save some time. We got better things to do. Right? So just think about that, you know, using a global palette when it comes to your theme. And then that way, when you see a, a symbol like this, some themes have a different type of a symbol, right? But uh, when you see a symbol like this, thank you, Audrey, for the, for the harp. You are able to add a global palette to it. You know, that's mean, it means it is the global, it's globally linked. That's the best way to say it. I'm going to say it that way, that it's globally linked. And you'll know that through the little icon there. So that way, again, when you make your new page, the colors are automatically there. And then even when you change this, this palette out here, you're able to, that's a, and when you do click this, you're able to learn like what, how the palette is used. So, you know, good documentation is important with a theme, right? Because you want to know, okay, well, I got this cool feature, but I don't even know how to use it, right? So they tell you, okay, these are your accents, this is your contrast, this is your base, right? And then they give you an example, literally right here, of how it would look in this order, right? In that order, it would tell you how the colors would associate with the different parts of your, so this is with the text right here. These are the accents, really, it's the button colors right here and a couple other things. So that's just how you want to really think when it comes to using, you know, a certain theme, your theme. Same thing with the buttons and same thing with the fonts. Right, when it comes to your colors, you want to think of them being globally linked. All right, all right. So that's what we really touched on last time when it came to thinking about your theme and being able to set up the settings as well as some of the layout settings too. But I really wanted to make the predominant aspect of this presentation about the different plugin settings for the, the, for the plugins that I was recommending, that I'm recommending. Let's go back here.
Oh, and let me touch on this too. So for those of y'all, and I know it doesn't have it here, but oh, it does have, okay. So you can enable auto updates with things as well too. This is a really cool feature that wasn't present in prior versions of WordPress, right? Older versions, I would say, being able to auto update your theme. So you don't have to worry about updating something. You can literally, you know, turn the auto update on and it will just auto update on your behalf. I think, again, these are certain things that either we take for granted or we just don't know about. And then, you know, for, we forget to take advantage of it in a positive way because it will save you time. You know, WordPress used to get a bad rep for having to auto, having to update all the plugins. And I'm a fan of, of Russell Brunson. He's taught me a lot about sales funnels, about, you know, being your authentic self, about, you know, building, you know, journeys and experiences, you know, through your offerings and really understanding how this game is played. And that's why I love WordPress because I'm kind of like the, the, like, if he was Mr. Miyagi, I'm Daniel's son. I'm kind of like, I want to turn into the Mr. Miyagi of WordPress in a way where now I'm kind of to some degree competing with click funnels, right? When it comes to educating people and letting them know that like, you can use WordPress and build out a funnel factory like multiple funnels and you just have to understand how to do it in a functional way in an easy way. So that's where I'm coming from the perspective of recommending certain plugins is how to build a website, but also how to create funnels like landing pages and checkout pages and journeys and, and certain pages where you are putting people through. Once you get them to their, your website, they're coming through and it's going to kind of automate the process for them, you know, along their journey. So the colors, the fonts, site logo, we touched on that in the last, in the last session as well too. But really, this, I want to get into part two, and this is going to be adding the, the plugins, then setting up the plugins, and then touching on a little bit of setting up a Gutenberg. Make sure everybody is still awake. Y'all, is everybody there? I, I want to make sure everybody's good. If you got something in the chat, it's all right. Oh, Sally's cool. You're, you're, you're no problem. No problem. Everybody, can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me well? Everything is all good. We sleeping on me? Because I'll wake you up now. I'm turn the next page on you. All right. All right. Alicia says we're awake. Chris, appreciate that. K, all is good. All right. All right. So let's get into the meat and potatoes. Anybody, anybody, I know, you know, some folks who don't celebrate Thanksgiving, it's all good. You know, you don't have to say anything, but as far as meat and potatoes, does anybody have any special dishes that they're cooking up this year that they have never tried before this year for Thanksgiving? I'm pretty curious on that. If you got something, throw it in the chat. If you're sticking to your guns, throw it in the chat as well, too. Sally may try a new cocktail. Okay, all right. I like that. All traditional. Okay, okay. Apple, apple tart. Apple tart. Okay, okay. Empty plate. <laughs> we got some funny answers in here. That is that is funny. I hope no, listen, if anything, I hope nobody, you know, has an empty stomach for these holidays, you know, help hope everybody's belly is full. I, I know too well how much that feels like to be hungry and it does not feel good. So I just wish everybody well for the for the season, just in general, you know, we're going into the new year. Again, this is what starting fresh on WordPress is all about. This is why we're here to talk about how we would set up our website in a fresh way you know, to go into this new year. And I don't even want to say hit new resolutions. I, I want to say hit them, them targets, right? We want to hit them targets, hit them goals. So that's what I want to do is help people hit them goals. All right, so here's a little bit of transparency for you. Because I'm all about transparency. This is, this, is between, this is between us. I just did my taxes this year and about seven years, just to show y'all, I've been in this game for a very long time, okay? I had a, 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 a bit of imposter syndrome for a very long time as well, too. So I kind of really, you know, tucked my head between my legs 
or put my head in my, my turtle shell for a very, very, very long time because I didn't believe I was good enough. And I'm telling you this is the truth because as you can see, you know, I have about seven years and this is just since I started my business. I was still, I mean, my second business. I started my first business in 2018. But in seeing that, you know, once I went through this, this process of being educated on uh, taxes, and I did my taxes for 2020 so that I can apply for the, uh, the, the EIDL and the PPP. But then I went back and said, you know, it's time for me to be responsible and do them all and stop being scared or scurred, as we say, and stop being scurred and go back and take care of my business. <clears throat> so I did, and I noticed a pattern of, of, of what could be considered, you know, showing that I've been using software for a very long time. And I saw that I spent, you know, about $13,000 over the last few years on just software alone. So, yeah, I think I know a little bit or two about vetting apps, plugins, software, taking some chances, taking some risks, going through all the ins and outs of every single category you can think of when it comes to software and having to understand, you know, most of these things do the same thing. It's really just about your preference. And that's something that I learned when it comes to plugins was plugins are just apps or software, you know, within WordPress, but they also are initiating a certain process. And once you understand that fundamental concept and you start to get into the whole terminology of your tech stack, it's really like your business stack, right? If you were, if you had a business model and you were doing the business model canvas and you were looking at your business and departments and things, how would these plugins really help you do that process, you know, do that activity, right? And so that's the way, again, that's how I view WordPress. That's how I view it. It's a system of systems. I'll say that again. It's a system of systems. And these are systems that are initiating processes, things that you would typically have to do manually if you didn't have this, this tool or this app or this plugin. So I'm going to start adding these plugins fresh, right? to this fresh installation of WordPress so that you can just see this all in real time. And then I'm gonna set them up a little bit, the, some of the settings, and then get into the Gutenberg part. Now, I wouldn't do my due diligence if I didn't give a few different options. And that's why you see option one, option two, option three. But for the sake of time, I'm gonna go with option one because this is my favorite stack. But you can use any combination of these if, that, you know, that you want to. So on the left-hand side, you have your categories right and then here across the road you have the actual plugin you know pick pick and choose how you want to do it but these are what i would consider are the fundamental plugin categories that you want to add to your wordpress installation and we want to have a lean i believe that it's very important that we realize that we need to have a lean wordpress installation right we don't want something that's bloated something that's you know gonna make us have to do more optimization than necessary, right? It's unnecessary to have to do all this extra optimization because our WordPress website isn't fast. And before we could get away with that. Now we can't, you know, with Google Core Web Vitals, with all these updates when it comes to Google and not just that, because of TikTok, oh my God. People's attention spans are just crazy these days, right? So, you know, we're in a microwave era. We want things instant, you know, instant coffee, instant rice. And if a fast, is, if a website isn't instantly coming up, we get a little angry, we get a little impatient, and then we go to the competition. So that's why I believe it's important to not only understand the plugin categories, the functionalities, but understand the technology and how it was built, how it was created. That would give you the best of, you know, as many worlds as possible. That way you can build a really, really good website. It's robust. There goes that word. It's robust. It's fast. And it does all the things you needed to do automatically or auto magically. Right. All right. So let's add cadence blocks first. Oh, I already had it on there. Sorry. I know somebody probably saw that. Like, why are you adding that again? 
but we all make mistakes. Okay, so Cadence Blocks, this is the plugin that will give the functionality for building out the web pages with Gutenberg instead of actually having to have a page builder like Elementor or Divi or Beaver Builder. Those are some popular ones, right? So now that Gutenberg is here, it's caught up, it's ready, it's usable. I've, I've, I'm building many websites, client websites and my own websites with Gutenberg, right? Since, it, since it's just been ready. So I'm going to go back to plugins. We're going to add the next one. We're going to add Fluent Forms here. And this is a form builder plugin that I recommend. Um, so, and I mean, listen, anybody can do a presentation and I'm not going to hate or, or, you know, feel any kind of way if you're giving your preference and then you're giving why you you like it you know I feel like it's okay for us to give our opinion too. we just got to make sure we give other people other options, you know, and try to be as unbiased as possible. But sometimes it's like bump that you got to be proud, you know it's okay to be biased in a positive way if it's something that you really rock with. And you know it's really good you vouch for it right I mean now you got to take that hit of things go wrong sometimes but it's okay. So don't ever let nobody, don't let people make you feel, you know, X, Y, Z, because you're proud of your recommendation. I just want to give that tidbit, right? I, I mean, take us to church, but I just want to let y'all know. All right. So Fluent Forms, I really like because of the fact that it's very flexible, the team behind it. So both these plugins, the teams behind these plugins, I always look at teams, right? Teams are they matter if you're going to use a plugin do you trust the team of of visionaries of developers of the marketing the people behind it that this thing you're choosing is not going to be now if you're just making websites and you're just testing things out and you know you don't care if a plugin breaks down because you're going to just go to the new next one or you know you really don't care about you know having the same plugin for years to come some of this might not apply to you i'm gonna just keep it real right but if you're somebody who is building websites or you're developing websites and you you want to be able to build a website on WordPress that's sustainable, that's going to last the test of time, that you don't have to be maintaining all the time. And then when you do need help, does that support that comes with it, are they going to actually help you? Then this may apply to your situation. Okay. But Fluent Forms is something I really highly recommend as well because their team they make a suite of plugins and they do a really good job when it comes to support and when it comes to their features. And that's the free. Remember, these are free plugins that I'm showing, sharing y'all. So iThemes, it, it, it really depends on your security, the kind of security you have on your website. Security could be a whole nother topic as well too. Here's some example of some security plugins. I like iThemes. I use SiteGround hosting for my hosting for, for some of my sites. I also used Cloudways before. I'm thinking about going to Kensta. To be honest, next once my site ground is up, because I kind of just want to work with a hosting company where they are experts in WordPress. I'm willing to pay that premium, you know, for it as well too, because it's like kind of having an extra developer on your side without having to pay for a contractor or having to hire an employee almost away. But I think security is a really good free plugin. Their UI has improved over the past year. They've updated it, so it's really cool. Their features are pretty good. Uh, this is something that I do recommend, but you see that there are other security plugins. What I don't recommend, and I know this is WordPress, so you know they're probably going to be like, you know, they probably don't get on me when I try to apply for other Word, Word camps and things like that. Like, why are you talking about our plugin like that? But I'm just keeping it real. I don't, I don't recommend Jetpack for nothing, y'all, for nada. You know, I know this is automatic. You know, I know automatic and WordPress. You know, but I just don't, for people who don't, most developers don't like Jetpack. It bloats down your side. It adds extra stuff you don't need. You got to turn, it's just, it's just a lot. Now it does have some really good use cases because it's a one size fits all. It does have some really good use cases, right? But most of the time, most people don't need that unless you're trying to use WordPress on the app on your phone, then you got to connect it through, through Jetpack. And Jetpack typically works for WordPress.com. But that's the like the WordPress.com version into WordPress.org, which is this is what we're talking about here is WordPress.org for, for those of y'all who don't who don't know. I would assume everybody here knows we're, we're talking about WordPress.org, not .com. But if you didn't, 
remember that. All right, so iThemes is on there. Let's go to the next one, Updraft Plus. Now, the reason why we would want something like Updraft Plus is for backups. You got to back up the backup to back up the backup. You got to back it up. You know, I, I know some of y'all might think it's corny, but I used to listen to a lot of hip hop when I was growing up and Juvenile had a song that, you know, back that thing up and I feel like you got to apply that to your WordPress website. But the reason why is because now, again, if you type in backup the category, it's actually number one. But if you don't have a backup to your website it, and it goes down on the hosting, you are, you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to be hurting. It's going to be, it's going to be crickets for you. That's how you're going to feel. I'm telling y'all. And it just happened. So I built a, I just built a, a funnel for an author. We're actually premiering her. And this is, see, this is where y'all get a lot of transparency from me. Like a lot. I'm going to keep it all the way real because I don't want to do too much, but I'm going to show y'all real quick. So I just built a funnel for an author. Uh, uh, just, she did her first novel and she's a really good author too. And she, she does a lot of, uh, I think her category, now I always get it wrong, but uh, it's like spiritual development in some ways. Uh, but we just built her funnels for her per, for her premiere for her presale page, and and I'm gonna relate this why this goes back to the backup. But I just wanted to share this with you all. Sometimes you know, sometimes you got to go off the yellow brick road. You got to go to like one of them side missions. So we're playing a video game. You got that main mission, but then you got them side missions that you do to kind of collect the power up, and then bam, you're back on the main mission. And next thing you know, you're getting through that main mission a lot easier because you don't power it up so much with the side missions. You're like, man, life ain't even that hard no more. I got all these new superpowers. I'm ready to go. That's kind of how this is right now, okay? But for the most part, what we've done is so like i said now don't judge don't don't judge i'm showing y'all because nobody really seen this right it's this premiere so what we did was i gave her the strategy of creating a free chapter and a personality quiz right that way she can get people into the funnel all this was done with wordpress and gutenberg and cadence blocks that you see right now so that's the free chapter page right there. And then the personality quiz right here. This is what we did with Fluent Forms. So I'm just giving you practical uses. What's cool about Fluent Forms is not only is it like a form builder like Gravity Forms or WP Forms, because there's really our contact form seven. Now I'm not saying these other form builders aren't good, but which is I'm giving you a practical reason why we went with Fluent Forms from a, strate a strategic standpoint was because we were able to build a quiz for her. It was a quiz because she has two characters in her book Natalie and Ashley. So I said, hey, why don't you use two characters as outcomes and say as a personality, one character, are you related to this character, Ashley? Or are you related to this character, Natalie? And so we built the quiz with Fluent Forms using the conversational form type of feature, which typically is done with Typeform and Typeform costs a lot of money. Typeform is the mecca of that conversational form feature. If you've never heard of Typeform, right? Typeform ain't cheap. So imagine getting the type form functionality inside of WordPress and getting the form functionality and other things like that. So that was the reason why we chose Fluent Forms as an example. That's how I think when I choose plugins. How can I use it in multiple ways and not just the one way that it, it seems to be on the surface level with its, you know, main features per se. So we did that. And then this is her pre-sale page right here. We're still trying to figure out how to get this to get i'm going to show you another video player one but so we're just using a placeholder dummy fluent forms right there so this was something that we built in a month like i challenged myself to say okay because she needed she had other people that were you know they kind of bailed out on her and so she came to me it was a last minute thing i said okay we, we have to really prioritize our time and we did all of this in a month uh and then once you click this button right here and I'm going to, I'm going to get back to it, but the, 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 the moral of the story, as I say it right, the moral of the story, the story of more, I don't know why I just really forgot how to say that saying, but the whole main point was that her site last week just went down. She has Bluehost and I get a message at like four o'clock in the morning, my site's down. I, I almost start panicking because I'm thinking like, okay, my developer just touched it last. Now I got to ask him I, and it had nothing to do with us. It was a Bluehost and literally it erased everything, all of these pages that we made 
as well as her other website too on the hosting. And she did not have it backed up with a backup plugin. So that's what I'm saying. And I'm keeping it all, this really happened. This is not, I'm not making this up. This happened about a week ago. And, you know, it was her lesson. I, I didn't want to beat the, the dead horse. You know, I made sure, I, I made sure to let her know, like I, I warned you about this. But, you know, I had, to, I had to let it go. I had to let it go. Because I felt like she learned the lesson and it will never happen again. So for those of you all who do have good hosting, sometimes your hosting has backups, sometimes they don't. Whether or not they do or don't, make sure that you back up your website. Let's go to a short card. So speaking of, right, this is my favorite plugin right here. And if we go, okay, let me let me know y'all too, if we, we go a little bit over time. If you have to go, you, you can go, but uh, we might just go a little bit over time this time. But feel free to, we'll have the replay, so you don't have to worry about it. I made sure to hit the recording button in the beginning, because I almost forgot that. Let's see. So we have short card on there. Now, that's what this is right here. Oh, right here. So this checkout form is a custom checkout form we made through short card. Isn't this a beautiful form? I never thought I would use the word beautiful with the word form before, or checkout form. But, I mean... It, it it changed the whole game of us being able to get a fast checkout page without the bloat. So if I go to, no, I can't go to, because PageB Insights, when you're using it on Chrome, it freezes a lot. So you have to, I have to open up Safari, but everybody doesn't have Safari because everybody doesn't have a Mac. But I'm like, is that just my, is anybody else having that issue too when they go to PageB Insights? See, I, I mean, Let's see, PHP Insights. When they go to PHP Insights, right? And then they put in the page. And I'm not going to do it because I don't, I don't want to freeze the situation. But uh, when you analyze the website, now I'm going to do what? Well, should I take the chance? I wonder if I should take the chance. I'm going to take the chance. Listen, Look, I'm a risky person, y'all. I'm a risky person. Uh, I'm going to let it do its thing. And then I'm just going to click off of it. But I'm showing you this because checkout pages have to be, checkout and landing pages to be the fastest site on your website. I mean, anybody can counter argue that, but that's just my opinion. If you're doing, if you're looking to get the maximum conversions that you can get out of a situation, so that's good. That's on mobile and the desktop is 102. All right, so let me click off of it before it starts to freeze up my computer. So if you're looking to maximize your conversions well, for whatever it is that you're doing, you want your checkout to page to be lightning fast, lightning fast. You don't have time, people don't have time and that's every second that it has to load is you losing conversions, whether it's money, whether it's applications, signups, or whatever it is, right? So you want your, your form, the page where a person is ordering, app, applying, checking out, you want that to be fast. And so Shortcart gave us the ability to do so, along with some, nah, I ain't gonna lie, we, we did some optimization using the caching plugin. We used one called WP Rocket. But even without WP Rocket, it still would be fast. We just, we, you know, we like to do lightning fast, as you saw over here. But for the most part, Shortcart, it allows you to add products to your website without the bloat that WooCommerce is going to give you. Now, when I say the bloat that WooCommerce is going to give you, I'm not just talking about it's WooCommerce, the plugin itself. I'm talking about all the other add-ons and plugins that you have to look at and think about. But let me look in the chat and make sure, let me see if I have seen anything. Anybody have any question? Who is the company behind Short? Uh, the company behind Shortcart is the same company that makes Astra. Let's see if they show it. Astra and Spectra and Cartflows. So they are credible, highly, highly, highly credible. So Shortcart will give you the ability again to do a lot of your e-commerce functionality with, without the bloat of WooCommerce. Now Presto Player, this is my favorite video plugin. Now why is this applicable? Like what what is what is the whole point of using a video player? Now I'm curious. Anybody in here? Does everybody in here that uses WordPress do you use a video player plugin? I'm curious. From everybody's perspective if you do put yes in chat don't put no so we got a lot of no's interesting 
Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. See, that's why I got to give y'all that fresh perspective. No, not yet. I'm new to using plugins. Okay. Okay. So we got a lot of no's. We got a lot of no's. So, okay. So that means we learning today, right? We learning something new. Because, and I'm saying this to say, this is the reason why I, I like to be practical, right? And because this is fresh, like I said, we got to, we really got it. We, we premiering this on Sunday because this is fresh. I felt like this is a good opportunity to just share with y'all. Now she's okay with me sharing, sharing with this because she, she's technically, she knows she's our case study, right? We gave her a really, really good deal for the amount of time we had to put into the situation. That's between us. And if she watches this, ha, 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 you, you won. But either way, this whole video situation here is slowing down our website so much. Now we do have a pop-up and that's not really it. So let's say I went back to the page speed. Let's, let's do it again. See, I'll be letting y'all see our stuff, but don't be judging though. Don't be judging. Let me get off of here. Let me get off a of short card. I got to close, keep these tabs closed, right? Because I do not want it to freeze. Because this page, we cannot get it that fast. And I know it's because this video is bogging down the site. YouTube is helped. When you embed a YouTube video, use YouTube. It will it'll be, it's like the number one killer of your page being on your website. A lot of people don't understand that because you're trying to get the best of both. You're trying to get the YouTube video, which is great, right? From a conversion standpoint, because video converts really, really well, but you don't realize that that video, because you're not using an optimized way to put it on your website, it's bogging down your website a lot. So it's gonna slow down your website if you don't use a performance-based video plugin. And that's where this plugin, Presto Player, comes in. So does that make sense for everybody? One of the reasons why I'm saying it's important to think about even the video plugin that you use and put it on your website. Now, it's not just that. It's also the functionalities that it gives when it comes to video marketing. But I'm going to keep continue to add the rest of these real quick. Now, Rank Math is an SEO plugin that I recommend. And it's comparable or it's an alternative of Yoast and an SEO press is another one. Most people know Yoast as one of the top, the, the 800 pound gorilla, the top dogs in the SEO world. But I advocate for Rank Math because they give way more features in the free version than Yoast does one, even with the paid version of Yoast, even some of the paid ones, it gives a lot in the free version of Rank Math. So I, excuse me, I highly recommend Rank Math because of the fact that it's not only made by a really, really good company, but the things that you can do with it on the free and then the pro version gives you so many more features that they, again, they do really, really well. And I really don't think most people will be disappointed, you know, moving, migrating form. And you can migrate from Yoast to Rank Math really, really easily as well too. And for those of y'all who don't know what the whole purpose of SEO or this plugin, I got to touch on that too, because I, I made the other situation more practical. We're not doing right now, we're not doing SEO on these. She will be doing, I think, ads and just promoting it through her social media network. Essentially, she'll be doing SEO to her website. But say, if, say we were trying to get seen on Google through blogging, right? This is where Rank Math would come in. Say those videos, Rank Math has a really good video functionality where your videos will get seen in Google. Like if you're wondering how when you type something in and you see it on videos and you can get your videos on your website seen in Google for keywords by using the right and correct functionality from the SEO plugin. Rank Math has that. It's one of the features that it has. So other than being able to just give you kind of out the box SEO, it has some other functionalities that give you more real estate in Google that you normally wouldn't get for free out of most plugins. Okay, WP code. All right, so WP code. This is one that I recommend if you're looking to add functionality to your website through custom code or through some snippets and say you're not a coder, right? 
Well, you don't have to be a coder. You can, they have a lot of templates inside of these plugins where you can use, say you wanted to do something and you didn't want to put an extra plugin on your website. So you're able to do that with these type of plugins, code snippet plugins, and WP Code is a really good one. And then Google Site Kit, I use that for Google Analytics. Google Site Kit has gotten better, uh, a, a lot better over time. And you just connect it with your Google Analytics. It will put the GA4 tag, or you, I believe it'll connect if you have the GA4 tag. So if you're not used to Google Analytics or don't know anything about it, it's really to see the, the traffic coming to your website, what's happening, right? And Google Analytics is a free analytics tool. It's the top mecca. It is the 800 pound gorilla when it comes to analytics. You connect to your website. They have a new version called Google Analytics 4. The old version was called Universal Analytics, and they're getting rid of that this next coming year in July. So Google Analytics 4, it's not an upgrade. I am certified in Google Analytics. I just got certified a couple months back. So, you know, at least taking the, the, the classes, it was interesting to see them really touch on letting people know this is not an upgrade. It's a whole new version. They, they, and they made it in a way to where it's more AI, it's more user-friendly, it's AI driven. It's using, it uses predictability. So it can tell you what's ha what could happen next on your website from an AI perspective. If you just ask it a question, Hey, Google, how is my campaign going to be doing next week or in a month based on the numbers that came from, and then it'll just give you some, and it's just the coolest thing. So for those of y'all who, you know, just lo are looking at analytics for the first time, it's a really good start. And then you can use other analytics tools as well. So let's go to the install plugin. Now there's a reason why I did not intentionally just install everything because I wanted to show you all, for those of y'all who don't do it this way, you know, I'm a big fan of bulk action. So if I can just bulk activate everything at one time, I'll do so. And we're gonna skip this for now. This is rank math trying to set you up, kind of trying to put you through the, their onboarding. So now all the plugins are installed, as you can see, right? Now, for the most part, if you're going to set up SiteKit, since it wants to do it first, you would connect this with Google Analytics. I don't want to sign in right now, but you would just sign in. It would find your analytics. So before you, I know this is, I'll say Google Analytics. You want to go to analytics.google.com, set up your Google Analytics. Once you do so and you're signed in, you just go back to your plugin and then you sign in with it and it'll connect your website like magic to, to Google. And now you have Google connected with your website. You'll be able to collect all that data, all that information. You know, make sure you're, you're doing it responsibly, right, with, with a lot of these new privacy laws. But collect that information and that data, and then you can be informed to make decisions. So everything you're doing on your website, all this work that you're putting in, you want to know how things are being measured and how things are being tracked, right? And this is a great way to do so for free and easy, easily. So I mean, you're in luck. If you didn't know anything about Google Analytics before, and yeah, Universal Analytics was a total situation. This new GA4, I'm telling y'all, I think most people... You know, and I know that's saying a lot. Most people would be able to use it, understand it to a, to a fundamental degree, and it would increase whatever it is that they're doing because now they're, under, they're understanding how the analytics works from a user-friendly standpoint versus from like a developer standpoint or analyst standpoint. Okay, okay. All right, so... So we, talk, we talked about setting up Google Analytics, I think security. Now, good thing about these plugins, right, is that they particularly, sh when you set them up, I mean, when you, when you hook them up, they should set up themselves. They're like the default settings. And let me see, where is this? Skip setup. So I just skipped setup, right? I, you know, it's up to you, two-factor authentication. I think it's very healthy practice for privacy, for to, to help avoid, you know, people hacking your website. I don't really use it, but you have that feature. 
local brute force, network brute force. Now, here's the thing that people sometimes forget, and I, I touch on this every time I talk about security. Most of your security comes in from your hosting. So a plugin is just as doubling down. It's like the backup of the backup, just doubling down. Most of your security comes with your hosting. I promise you all. So if you're good hosting, that's most of security. There are so many different technologies and nuances happening. I don't even think the smartest person who understands what's happening could, could say every single thing that's happening. But when you look at even the hosting and all the layers of the technologies they're using just to host your website, it's crazy. So, and that's outside of WordPress. They ain't got nothing to do with WordPress. You know, so just adding that part and this hosting part, the WordPress aspect of things, you got to think of it that way. It's, it's big. Like as far as hosting being real big on security. User groups, I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm just going to go to default. Okay, so administ So if say you have more people on your website that are more, you know, admins and editors, this is a really good setting that you can set up where they have certain permissions on how they can access. And this comes with iTheme security. And it comes with a lot of other security plugins as well too. But I'm just going to skip this. And this is, I mean, I, I like when it, I'm going through this wizard. Now, this is something else too that I, I, I'm a big fan of working smarter, not harder. Because yeah, I can go, we can go over every single setting verbatim, right? Setting for setting. But if I'm going to practice what I preach and teach you all that, you know, do your own due diligence. Don't just take my word for it. But at the same time, go, when I'm just showing you how to hook up settings, go with the recommended settings for the most part at first, you know, go, go through them. But work with plugins, you know, and software that they already set you up for success. You ain't got to go in there and do all this extra stuff. Now, if you want to tweak something, you have the opportunity to do so, but you shouldn't have to. I like to work with plugins that do that for me because I don't have time. I just don't have to be. We have, there's just so much other things that we have to do. And I want to make WordPress easy for people. So, boom. You see how I just went through that little setup wizard, onboarding wizard? Now it's securing site. And you're good to go. So I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to let it do that. A little bit of vibrato right there. All right, so now we have, we have our, our theme. You know, iTheme I security, our security plugin is set up. A Presto player. Now, what's cool about Presto player, like I said, that it's a, it's a video marketing plugin. And... They cornered the market with that because if you go to video into plugins, and I don't know if they if they're you know as far as uh, marketing themselves in that way, but if you go to video, most video plugins are video galleries, so they really they really met a need that most people who didn't know they needed in the plugin video plugin world for WordPress. Because things like Wistia, that's a very popular Wistia, right? So Wistia is one of the most popular ones. Vimeo is another one. A lot of people don't understand the terminology of video marketing. And I think that WordPress and video marketing go hand in hand because you are hosting your video through, not on WordPress, through WordPress, right? So Wistia and Vimeo are the top two video marketing type, I mean, video type of plugins i mean not plugins but platforms so when you have presto player they one it does work with vimeo and youtube but they created the opportunity for you to have video marketing features like collecting emails using cl clickable links being able to put different skins and you control the video player they gave you the ability to do so within their oops i meant to go to presto players settings Within, within their video player. So I'll share that with you. So here like in Google Analytics, they integrate with Google Analytics as well. So I just mentioned setting up your Google Analytics. You can easily integrate with this and this is a pro feature, but it does allow you to do so. You can do privacy with YouTube. So they have this really cool skin or preset where you can add it to your video and it will hide the YouTube skin. Why would you wanna hide the YouTube skin? Well, it's every time somebody pauses a YouTube video, it shows. So here, here I'm going to show you real quick, practical terms. And then I'm going to, boom. So there you go. You see, when you pause it, 
these other videos pop up here. So that is a way that you will take people off of your website and they will never come back to your website. That is the easy way to do that is using a YouTube video that is kind of like unprotected. You know, it's it's got it's got, it's got its a normal original YouTube skin over it. You don't want to do that. So something like Presto Player helps you be able to take that away from it, which is kind of cool. You can also connect this with your email marketing suite or email marketing tool. They have webhooks in the pro version as well too, but you would connect this there. And in that way on your video, you can collect email at the beginning of the video. You can collect email in the middle or at the end. You can decide if the person has to give you their email before they can watch the rest of the video, or they can just skip the email part and keep watching the rest of the video. That's adding more functionality to a video that takes one video you've made into a marketing tool for your business. And Presto Player gives you the ability to be able to do so, as well as you can add your branding to it too. So, and the performance part right here, this is what I really like. This setting right here. Now, if you're using some type of LMS, have you ever used, you know, been on a, a course site and the, what is this? Like the video progress when you, I believe it's when you press play on the video or don't press play and you're in the, and you've kind of been cookied basically, it will, it will allow when you, when you go to the next video, I mean, when you finish the video, it'll all automatically go over to the next video. Like that's what this plugin does is it gives you the ability to use the video on the LMS, like tutor LMS, learn dash are a couple ones lifter are some ones that this will kind of sync with those tools and sync the video with those tools and how a person progresses through their, through their course lessons, just by having this toggle along right here. And this right here gives, it just makes your, your video load faster. So that video was, that was blocking on the website, the regular way, turning this on, it just dynamically loads the JavaScript, which just means it's going to load the Java. It's going to load the video in a very smart way that just gives you more speed and performance back. Again, these are things that I feel are very important when it comes to building your, your website. I don't know why I went to sentence there. All right, so Presto Player is something that you definitely want to think about setting up. Rank Math, I'm not going to go through all these settings, but I will say that they do set up Rank Math out the box. So when you go through that wizard, there's going to ask you a few questions. I will go to that wizard, answer the questions that they ask you and then just let it go you know unless you want to and, and i i highly suggest you do so but i want to get you through it without having you having to get so bogged down on all these parts and pieces because they do set this up in a way to where it's set out the box you just got to have the plugin on your website and then get back to your day you know go to that onboarding wizard get back to your day and let it work its magic the pro version is worth it on worth it but the free version does more than enough for most people and it will get you seen on google and we all want to be seen on google because that's how we get more people more free traffic to our website that we've worked so hard to build because we're not building these wordpress websites for no reason i would hope so for the most part let's see i'm just looking at the chat real quick i don't know anything about culture but i can our culture, but I can learn. Um, I believe it tracks you are in the course, so you leave coming. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah, it does, and that's what it does. Presto Player does the tracking with the course, so it's it's pretty cool. So let me go back to my plugin settings here. Boom, boom. All right, all right, all right. So we talked about Rank Math, Site Kit. I already mentioned that as well. That was in the beginning. Updraft Plus. We talked about. WP code and shortcut. So the settings in shortcut, I'm going to do this one and then I'm going to go into Gutenberg and then we're going to call it a wrap. So I'll probably be about 15 minutes over if that's okay. Again, you can watch the replay of it, but it's all good. Cause this is, this is the juicy part y'all. I'm going to keep it real. I need y'all to know that this is the real juicy part. I'm, I'm matter of fact, before I even, I don't want to assume. Put a yes in the chat if you do any type of e-commerce transactions on your website. Put a no in the chat if you don't. Let's 
seems like we got a little bit of even yeses and, and nos and some maybes. Okay. Okay, not currently. Not currently. All right, all right. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So I'm assuming for the nose that you may not need to, or you don't have a, a e-commerce process, you know, you don't really do your, your, any type of, you know, money collection, you know, through the website. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So we got a few, few folks that do a few folks that don't, and it's all good because this is just, again, a learning a learning experience, but just something that I just wanted to share with you all. So short cart, you're able with which makes this so much different than I would say WooCommerce. And, and the main reason why I'm going over this with you all because they are they are having a special right now that ends tomorrow. I have no affiliation with them. And this is just me sharing y'all some of the goods, uh, some of the juice. This is the, this is me spilling the tea because this is running in the Facebook group the private the, the private facebook group and like i said it ends tomorrow but it's been a highly anticipated deal for months and months and the i believe that this is going to change the game in the e-commerce world to where if you weren't doing e-commerce before on your website you're probably gonna come up with an excuse to do something <laughs> based off of all the functionality that this can do in the free version let alone in the, in the pro version but let me share with you all real quick this this part so when you are setting it up the thing about short card and we talked about it we have a if you want to go to wordpress.tv there is a presentation i did of short card versus woocommerce and so you're able to see more in depth of the difference between the two i'm gonna can just just try to get this so you see, I'm going to the setup wizard. This is a headless plugin, meaning that the difference between this and WooCommerce is that it does not host the data on your website like WooCommerce does. So that's the first thing. There are people who've used Thrivecart, Shopify, other e-commerce functionalities, and they use it with in tandem with WordPress. This is kind of in that lane, right? But it's a it's built, there's a plugin that connects to the kind of the offline or it's still online i shouldn't say online but off wordpress aspect of it but for the most part the settings out the box are just crazy you know this is the free version of short card i'm showing you right here so the settings out the box are just crazy and even the ui the ui is smooth you know woocommerce needs to update it just needs to update. It's just so it looks so clunky and so old, you know. And I don't mind using something tried and true that works, but sometimes I again fresh. This does not look fresh <laughs> in comparison to WooCommerce. So I know I'm about fresh vegetables. I'm about you know fresh bread. You know a fresh time, man. A fresh haircut. You know I need one. I'm a little rough out here, y'all. But yeah, you know I, I I need something fresh. So. Out the box, you know, you're able to add your, you know, your your contact information logo and and stuff like that. It's the mere branding. Then they have the uh, ordering numbers and receipts, invoice and receipts. You're gonna put a memo in the footer. Now I can't click this right here. I could go to my website and show y'all, but for the most part, you have this is abandoned checkout. So this is very important with e-commerce because if you ever gone to Amazon and you put, excuse me, something in your cart, you're able to recover that order automatically through a functionality like abandoned checkout. So a person like, you know, you being that consumer who you left the item in the cart, you go home or you go off the website and then boom, you know, you get an email. Did you forget something? That's abandoned checkout. They just recovered that order. If you purchased that order, they, they would have never gotten if they hadn't had some type of functionality. Uh, this allows you to do that with the pro version. But what's cool though, is that it has automatic notifications for subscriptions and refunds, order confirmation email. So it would automatically send these emails when a subscription cancel, cancels. You can do subscriptions with this plugin for free. You would have to pay for that with, or at least the licensing and pay for pro version of that subscriptions with other plugins with, with WooCommerce. And you would have to add another 
plug in because WooCommerce subscriptions is expensive. It's worth it to a degree, but it's expensive. This isn't the free version, y'all. So bam, you get these, these, and then you can customize, you can customize your emails as well too. And then you can say something more specific towards your brand or with your brand message in the email that's automatically going to get sent out on your behalf based on this. So here's the subscriptions tab right here. And this is what's really cool. Now I'm big on practicality and looking at this from a, a store owner myself, I can't use this yet because of some limitations with another plugin that I'm using. But once they actually are able to speak together, I'm going to be using Shortcart for one of my stores, my template shop that will give me the ability to do my subscriptions instead of using WooCommerce to do it. But I'll be able to use my subscriptions and do downgrades and upgrades and cancellations automatically. And then I can choose how people, how they, how they, how they interact with it. Does it happen immediately or does it do it on the next billing period? These are important, important functionalities that you want to have in your process that automatically happen without you having to go in and press a button or you got to go in and hit a toggle switch and stuff that you want to happen. And it gives your user the experience that they're being listened to, they're being heard, they're being understood, and they have options, you know, and they're working with a professional business that they are doing business with a professional business. You have to set that up with WooCommerce with many other different types of plugins. So these are things that, you know, I think that a lot of people don't think about when they're creating their website with WooCommerce, I mean, with WordPress from a strategic standpoint. Fail payments as well, too. And then another thing, which is really cool, the customer portal. Their customer dashboard looks so sweet in comparison to WooCommerce that with WooCommerce, we have to custom develop our customer dashboards, meaning like I, I don't do any development, so I had to have my developer use special code in order to customize our customer dashboard. Like when people log in, they look at their My Account page. With this, you can use the WordPress editor, Gutenberg, to make your own customer dashboard, moving blocks around and things like that without having to do any code. So you're giving your customer the experience based on how you customize your website with Gutenberg without using any code. And this also gives them the functionality here that says what they can do in that back end, in the customer dashboard. Do you want them to be able to change subscriptions, quantity changes? Can they cancel in the, I would say yes, for the most part, special cases where you may not want them, but I want people to, you know, I want to be sleeping and a person is able to still interact with my website in a way where it's like I have an assistant working for me, making decisions on our behalf. Another thing that's really huge, I mentioned in the WooCommerce versus Shortcart or Shortcart versus WooCommerce was the tax part. You would typically have to pay a lot of money to get automated taxes. This does it for free. You just put your address in there and it does it for free. You can hook up Stripe, PayPal. They are getting other payments like Razor, Molly, and a few other ones that are international based, but they automatically hook up with Stripe and PayPal for you. And then you can always get your data out and export your data as well too. Anytime you can export all your data. And that's pretty much short card for you. If you do add the plugin to your website, the free version, like I said, by Sunday, I'll just show you right, right here, boom. So for a life, the way that they're doing their deal is you can get the business pro version and the pro pro version. I said business pro pro, whatever. The business plan and the pro plan, and it's a buy one, get one. Uh, and they're doing either full price or 10 month installments. And so like I said, now, unless they change it, you know, they do the, the, the whoopsie whoop do the okie doke thing, the Kansas City shuffle where they say, you know, tomorrow's the last day. I don't believe the owner's bluffing because they've had, you know, they've only wanted limited lifetime accounts because of the cost. But yeah, if you want to want to do it, take that chance, put the pro plugin, I mean, put the free plugin on your website and then look at that and upgrade your plan. And you can do this one or that one. You can do 10 month installments or you can pay it all at one time. Now that's, that's that, that's, that's my show spilling the tea right there for y'all. I'm telling y'all the truth. Like I said, I ain't got no affiliation with it. I could technically get in trouble for it, but I'm telling y'all anyway. All right. So let's go to the, let's go to the pages real quick. Let's go to Gutenberg and then we're going to get out of here. Everybody still good? I just want, I just want to make sure. 
Everybody's still good. That's... All right, so we're gonna go to let's go to preferences real quick. This this is not a Gutenberg tutorial. I just said that I want to talk about the settings that people don't think about in Gutenberg. So in the WordPress editor of Gutenberg, how you get to your settings, you go to your preferences, and you can choose how you want to set your appearance up. What I also like about this, and a lot of people sometimes overlook or don't know it's there, you can actually decide what blocks you want to be shown on your website. So this is Cadence Blocks, the block pack that I added. And if I, I'm like, I don't want this lolly, I don't use that block, I don't use that one, you can decide easily to get stuff out your, your way, what you don't want to use, right? And then this is the cool part about shortcut is that, again, you get blocks with it. So I'm in Gutenberg, WordPress's native editor, and I'm getting blocks that I can use. So I can add a checkout form, a buy button, an add the cart button. I can customize the checkout experience to my liking without any code based on using these blocks. And there are a lot of blocks, as you can see. And this is the free version, y'all. Boom, that was all short card right there. Now we have the text blocks, right? WordPress is default. And basically you just do all that. You get that, you get that, you get that. And then let's see, do they have the save? I thought there would be a save button. Okay, let's just hope it remembers. So basically that whole part, the whole purpose of that was to be able to say what you do and don't wanna see over here. That's the, that was what the preferences for that was. Because sometimes you might not use certain blocks. And so I think a lot of people just, you know, they, they get overwhelmed with everything that's there. And I would just turn stuff on and off. And then you have your panel settings. So you can have your featured image discussion page attributes. That's what you would see over here. And additional, now this is new. I didn't know about the custom fields. So I'm not gonna touch on this too much, but I see that WordPress now has custom fields where once you click this, it has the custom fields at the bottom here. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. So I gotta learn more about that myself, the custom fields aspect of things. But you see that that is there. WordPress 6.1 also has a new way of seeing your kind of your page, they call it the summary, but like, okay, is this public or is this a draft or is this private or protected? Then do I publish this now? This is another good automation feature. This is big, y'all. I don't think a lot of people look at this as automation. This is automation when you can schedule certain posts or certain pages for a certain time period. And then you can just set it up and forget it and then let it just go on its own. You can set your permalink or your URL here. And then if you're using full site editing, you would put your template here. So this is what 6.1 gave because it did not look like that with 6.1. That was a, a big difference right there. Um, so yeah, that is for the most part, the settings of WordPress. And then if you were using cadence theme, or you're using like an Astra theme, they would have another settings where you can actually say, Hey, I don't want to have the page title. I want to disable the page title for this page. I want to have my, my page full width, or I want to have it normal, you know, or have a left sidebar. I don't want to have a header or footer. So this is how we got the functionality of this to make it look like a landing page. Well, what makes this a landing page? Well, one, now don't look, pay attention to the content because she still has to rewrite some of the content to make it make sense. But all these buttons lead to the checkout, right? This is a hello bar at the top. You notice that there is no navigation, right? There's a footer here, but typically there technically sh shouldn't be a footer. Still, it's, it's a, kind of your preference on what, whether you have a footer or not. You see there's no footer here on this free chapter page. Well, we were able to do that with the, based on the theme setting, saying disable the header and the footer to give it an indication it's a landing page. We don't want anybody going anywhere else. You either look, you either here or you leave totally. You know what I'm saying? But we don't want you bouncing off and getting distracted. That is how a sales funnel, or you know, they call them other things now. I don't know. Everybody wants to use sales funnel, but I still use sales marketing funnels. But that's how you create that in WordPress is using those type of features hiding the footer and the header very easily. And that's pretty much what I wanted to share with you all. And then the last part is, I would say, be smart about building your web pages. So a cadence blocks, this comes from the block pack and Spectra has it. I believe, let's see, Stackable has 
as well. So they have templates that you can use. So you don't have to start from scratch. You can use templates within your block pack and they should typically be optimized for performance and optimized for mobility and mobile responsiveness and tablet responsiveness. So you don't have to start from scratch if you don't want to, right? This is starting fresh, not necessarily always starting from scratch. So use templates when it comes to that. And these are actually our template pack. So listen, I'm, I'm a big fan of if I'm giving, because I this is, this is where I'm, I'm going to wrap it up, but uh, I volunteer my time for this. And I want to thank everybody for being here. I mean, we've had some people that had to leave, but we've had 14 people here strong. So much love for, for, for that. Uh, I would definitely say, you know, give yourself a round of applause for being here, making it to the end, dealing with my corny self. I know I could be a little corny sometime. I know I can be a little different. I, I just want to, you know, be me. And thank you all for for being here. When it comes to templates, use them. You can get so much. You can get so much faster. Get, get what you need so much faster than trying to like reinvent the wheel with certain things. Where you still, I gotta, I gotta work on that. That's that's my bad. I did one that was. We're, we're still optimizing some of our some of our newest collections. But for the most part, though, yeah. We do have our templates with Cadence. You can get them for free. So once you actually add the, the free Cadence blocks to it, you can then get the free version of our templates and then use those, use Cadence templates, use Stackable. I would only recommend you use two. Sorry, I would recommend you only use two blocks, a combination of like Spectra and Cadence or Spectra and Stackable. I would not recommend you use three or more just because it starts to get a little bit cumbersome. And that's something that a lot of people don't talk about too. They just get kind of plug-in happy, block plug-in happy, and you'll have three or four different plug-in blocks. No, I think that's a bad practice to have for the most part because you wanna use block packs that are full, that have what you need, and don't try to do too many bells and whistles if you don't need to do so. And that's pretty much it. So let me stop sharing my screen. Oh, Oh, no, I'll say the, share the last one here, only because it's got my LinkedIn. So yeah, if you want to connect with me, connect with me on LinkedIn. I appreciate everybody's time here. This was starting fresh on WordPress part two, where I went a little bit deeper. I did the recap, then went a little bit deeper on the plugin settings. And yeah, I just wanted to share with everybody that this is how I would build a lean, robust site whether it's using those type of plug those specific plugins or, or focusing on those plugin categories, think of it that way.